What's up, people? So I'm in my bus, Sandy bus. Did you see my video of my steel pan falling? Check it out. Yeah, not fun, huh? So I've got my steel pan and I'm gonna take her on over in Sandy bus right now to, uh, to get her tuned up by Dave at Dave's Island Instruments. Just another beautiful day at Long Beach, California. He doesn't know I'm here yet. I just walked into his um, workshop. I think I'll give him a call. Hey, there's a doggy here. That's right. Cool. Is that a new doggy? Yeah. yeah, I'm actually surprised. It could have been a lot worse than that. Yeah? Yeah. Little hole, but see those Strange. dents? Do you see the dent? Yeah. That's probably happened. Oh, yeah, that happened. That's new. Yep. That wasn't there. Yep. So, is it fixable? I was impressed with the way that thing fell, man. Just bam. Yeah. bam. Well, my, my editing skills happen. Cue Q, Q video. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna take it in now. Cool? Yeah. And uh, then I heard some kind of rumor about tacos. Yes. Oh. It was trippy how it happened when Max walked away. Yeah. Yeah, you know it's I mean? like... It was, it was almost as if the pan was saying, please save me from this... Well, you um, know what I think it is? What? Did Max vote for Trump or not? You know what? Uh, we're not even gonna go down that path right now after today's ruling and everything. What? So, I didn't know what yeah, today's ruling exactly. is, so I don't know. So, yeah, that's good. <laughs> It's good at this point to not know. Okay. So, all right, do your thing. First things first, I, uh, I attack the wrinkles. All right, well, it looks a little smoother. Wrinkles like that, sometimes uh, you can get them out. Sometimes you see residual wrinkle afterwards. It's not always a perfect science getting wrinkles out like that or dents. But usually a nice flat mallet like that usually helps. Nice. Oh. I'm just kind of going around from note to note right now. I usually start with some of the higher notes, kind of get those cleaned up a little bit. I got the C cleaned up, so now it has an octave on it again. It was uh, resonating nicely with the uh, middle C. I got the low C in. And I started working on the G's. What Dave doesn't realize is that I only play Margaritaville and um, in one key, so I'm sure it's going to sound fine. Let me just give you a uh, synopsis of uh, what happened here. Hi, so wrong. mostly just these three notes were kind of affected mostly. And okay. Then the center notes were pretty far off. Of course, like I said before, sometimes I can't tell when something's damaged. Like, was it off before? Has it always been off? I don't know. So I was uh, messing with things here. So we got those back. At least they're the accurate pitches now. Um, got a C with an octave on that C, so I'm happy with that. I don't know if it's as bright as it used to be, anything like that, but it's. Uh, I think it's much better than it was. So, you know, you can recognize it as a C. C works. So one thing I wasn't sure about is the C. I put a fifth back onto it. Most of the fifths are a little sharp sometimes. I'll do that. Uh, Chris does that sometimes too. Because it uh, sometimes will let the other note next to it sound a little bit more pure. You're so, yeah. it's your turn, Phil. Here you go. I've learned that, like, when checking the drum, for me personally, um, yeah, you want to check chromatically, of course, to make sure there's nothing. But I'm always just checking the, the root, third, sixth, within itself. And I want to 
I check it softly. Because believe it or not, contrary to popular belief, um, I don't really hit my pan all that loud. I crank the mic underneath and kind of just... Yeah. I always want it too hot. I always want myself to overpower my rock band. To me, my pan sounds on the warmer side. That could just be the rust and the dirt collecting there. Could be. But what are your thoughts in terms of your professional opinion, which you respect in terms of its tonality? Of this drum? Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a mellow pan. It's not it's super mellow. bright. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, it's not super deep. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when you don't sink it super deep, then uh, it's a little thicker metal, so it creates a little bit of a warmer tone. Uh, so yeah, a lot of those uh, things on combination. And like you said, some of the dirt on here could be giving it a more mellow tone. It'd be very interesting if you had like a, a time machine, you could go back to when it was brand new to like hear the difference to see if it sounds brighter or same. Yeah, I mean, I've been it. working on that time machine. I, I need a stroke tuner of those. Um, and this will be um, sacrilegious to some people say it, but th this pan right now sounds very much in tune to me. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know there's a sect of people who are always aiming for that, like, perfectly tuned pan. Mm -hmm. And for me, uh, there's a quality, like, sometimes, almost notoriously, my B yeah. will go out. And I'm kind of like, that's kind of cool. Whenever I hit that note, it kind of <laughs> wavers, and it's part of the quality. Yeah. In the same way in our recordings, like, sometimes I'll, the sticks will hit the pan, and I'm like, cool, leave it in there. That sounded kind of cool. Yeah. It's there. It's in rhythm. It sounds real. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I like to hear the fret noise on a, on a mm. guitar mm -hmm. in the recordings, and I know there's people completely dedicated to removing such things, and I've had people go, oh, the, you know, the pan's not perfectly in tune, and I'll smile and go, yeah, it's not. It's not perfectly in tune nor is your piano nor is that brass section we're playing with right now it's not that perfectly yeah, in point. tune yeah. so i know many times in art we're pursuing um perfection because we can't get it in real life but i embrace that part where let the pan kind of breathe and mold and how it sounds right now leaving the the tuners will not be how it sounds 100 gigs from you now out in the sun mm -hmm. um and to me i, I I kind of like that. I embrace that whole mm -hmm. thing. It's, yeah. it's I actually like the way a, a, a slightly out of tune pan sounds on recordings, personally. Yeah, yeah. Because in a recording, uh, when you're playing with all these in tune instruments, it just if it's perfectly in tune with everything else, it just kind of blends, and you don't really notice its its magical qualities. Mm -hmm. So when it's slightly sharp or slightly off, then you go, "Hey, that's a steel drum." Right. <laughs> exactly. There's the steel drum right there. Exactly. Yeah. Which, which is another thing too. Like you know, I've been directing musicals recently and other small orchestras and that type of thing and with vocalists and I'll, someone will say, oh, he has perfect pitch or she has perfect pitch. And a lot of times on my mind, I'm like, yikes, okay, let's keep that person away from me right yeah. now. Because <laughs> unfortunately, we are not in a perfect pitch situation, far from it right yeah. now. Funny thing about perfect pitch, yeah, uh, within, within the handpan world, a lot of people um, are really into the spirituality of it and there's a yeah. there's a a tuning where they call it uh, 432 hertz so right. this was tuned to 440 uh -huh. which you know within history within human history we haven't always been in 440 Correct. it's been kind of just ushered to us uh and so some people like the sound of 432 they believe it has healing properties and all this sort of thing I guess. so it's kind of fun funny what you're talking about with perfect pitch it's really kind of a, a very honed uh relative pitch to what they've heard before I see. Uh -huh. I, i'm assuming uh because there really is no perfect pitch it could be whatever we want it to be mm -hmm. but it's i guess as perfect as it could be with 440 and it's interesting for me because i don't really have perfect pitch that i know of i have good relative pitch but mm -hmm. uh like if you just had a, a note when you played it i probably wouldn't be able to guess it exactly uh however when i play a 432 instrument my ears i feel like i have to like lower myself a oh, <laughs> it's, like see? Kind of, it's kind of this weird slow response. your rhythm your yeah. bio see yeah and it. it really does actually sound a little bit flat in my ears mm -hmm. and i don't know if that's because of all these years of tuning that i can my brain is saying okay that is flat 
Well, right. I don't know. It's really fascinating. It's a fascinating it, experience. You know, speaking into that, we can go on this for, for days on end, but there's tacos waiting for us Good and a call. burrito. But one of the things I like to do compositionally, or I'll just call it groove-wise, in my band, my weirdo band, which, by the way, we are on the eighth song of a ten-song CD, um, so I'm right in the middle of it, of putting together arrangements. And one of the things I like to do that I see a lot of other steel drum based bands not do is let the rhythm section run without the steel drums. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Just let it run mm -hmm. and then the steel drum enters and there's like an ear tweak there a lot of times yep. like whoa is it flat is it sharp or what's going on or mm -hmm. where what I was listening to especially like something like a bass mm -hmm. where I'll just have the bass and drums play lines for a while and mm -hmm. groove and then I'll have the pan enter like on the uh, middle C. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like that effect. Mm -hmm. I want that to happen. Where I've done that before in the studio, someone will say, oh, the entrance sounded a little bit too harsh or something. Can we pad it out with a guitar strum or something? I'll say, mm -hmm. no. That was the actual effect I was mm -hmm. trying mm -hmm. to get there. Yeah. Okay, because it actually is in tune, but your ear played a little trick on you. Yeah. Listening down or up or whatever that is. Yeah. So th these are the fine points of, of steel drums, which I'm sure uh, many other people have actually explored, but I'm exploring them in my own way. Um, so really really truthfully the pan sounds to me wonderfully in tune it sounds great it definitely sounds better than before the accident mm -hmm. but even if it were not i would still embrace it and kind of run with it and go well let me give it 10 gigs and let's see what happens because yeah. you know it might work out just wonderfully or we have to adjust one string or something yep so that's it i mean cool man it's tuned and mr strobe tuner says it's tuned yeah <laughs> Uh, Dave says it's tuned. That's right. And now we're going to go on to the to the next part. Yay! In tune pan. Yay!